In this screencast, we'll calculate the pressure drop in a pipeline knowing uh, that the length of the pipe is 30 meters, uh, its diameter is 25 millimeters, um, and we also know um, the flow rate, the mass flow rate of the fluid going through. We know its density, it's, uh, yeah, here, and the viscosity. We also know that the reservoir at the end of the pipeline is 12 meters higher than the feed point. I've added values for um, absolute roughness for mild steel pipes that we're going to need to solve the problem. So at this point you should pause the video and attempt to solve the problem on your own before looking at the solution. So first things first, let me draw a little representation of the system we're working with. So this is a pipeline that's 30 meters long. It starts at that feet point and it reaches this reservoir at the end. It's important to label these two points that are the crucial points for our problem uh, with numbers. Call the feet point with one and we'll label the reservoir with two. So the, the most important concept that will help us solve this problem um, is energy conservation. And this can be used uh, through um, equations called energy balances. And applying an energy balance here at point one and point two will help us find um, the delta P, or pressure drop. Let's start writing this. Different colors will help. So in green I'll write uh, U2 squared over 2, which is our kinetic energy term, plus G times Z2, which is our potential energy term, plus P2 over rho, the density, which is our pressure term, plus F, which is the energy dissipated, and I'll talk about it later, is equal to U1 squared, so the same terms, over 2, plus G uh, Z1, plus P1 over rho. So the three different colors uh, represent kinetic, potential, and pressure uh, terms of energy. And F represents the energy dissipated. Now, the velocity in the reservoir is zero. So we know that U2 is uh, zero. So now we can rewrite this equation um, knowing this and putting all the terms on the left-hand side. So u1 squared over 2 plus uh, g delta z, which is the 12 meters, plus delta p over rho, where the delta p is what we're looking for, uh, plus f equals 0. So now let's, let's see what f actually is. Now f represents the energy dissipated per unit mass uh, due to flow resistance in pipes. So it can be derived to be um, this uh, equation. Now I'm not going to do the derivation here, but it can be found in various textbooks. So F can be found to, to be 4 uh, phi times the length of the pipe over the diameter of the pipe times the square of the velocity of the fluid. Now phi uh, is a dimensionless group a function that depends on the roughness of the pipe and the Reynolds number that we're working with. To find phi, we can make use of a friction chart where multiple curves corresponding to different relative roughnesses are plotted correlating phi with the Reynolds number. Here is a friction chart. Now this might look a bit intimidating at first, but if we know what we're looking for, we can actually navigate ourselves quite easily. So let's use a different color to identify the quantities that we, uh, we're looking for. So phi is here on the left hand side and there's a, there's a lot of different curves that correspond to various different values for relative roughness, E over D, where E is the absolute roughness. Uh, we also see the Reynolds number here which is correlated as we said before. So to, to find the um, phi that is specific to our uh, system, we need to identify our range of uh, relative roughness, so we know which curves actually matter to us. 
So we'll have to calculate E over D. And in the problem, I wrote um, uh, the values of range for our absolute roughness, which were between 0 0.05 and 0 0.5 millimeters. And we know the diameter of the pipe to be 25 millimeters. So the range uh, for our absolute, uh, the relative roughness is going to be between 0 0.002 to 0 0.02. Now we just need to calculate our Reynolds number. The Reynolds number is calculated as the ratio between the velocity u times the diameter of the pipe d times the density of the fluid rho over the viscosity of the fluid uh, mu. Now uh, we need to calculate uh, u, which is the velocity, and knowing the mass flow rate, we just need to divide that by the density and the cross-sectional area. Plugging in the numbers, we obtain that uh, the velocity is 1.38 meters per second. Now we can use this to calculate our Reynolds number. I'll pause the recording to write the calculation. We found that our Reynolds number is 2,540, and we can use this in the friction chart to find phi. So our Reynolds number corresponds to um, a line that sits approximately at this point goes up and our range of relative roughness goes from 0 0.002 to 0 0.02 so this curve and this one uh, which correspond then to pretty much this section here uh, so if we want to pinpoint one value for phi then we can see that it's more or less 0 0.0065 Let's write that down so we can better define F. You can say that from the chart, phi equals 0 0.0065. This means that F, which we already defined as 4 times phi times L over D times U squared, is now 4 times 0 0.0065 times the length over the diameter of the pipe times u squared uh, the velocity of the fluid so this gives you 1. Now we can go back to our energy balance uh, that we wrote at the start and we, we find that uh, now we know every quantity uh, except for the delta p so we can actually calculate it. Uh, we know the energy dissipated, we know the potential energy, and we know the kinetic energy, and we obviously know the density as well. So if we write the, the pressure job as a negative delta P, that's going to be P1 minus P2. That's equal to, um, so all multiplied by the density, U1 squared over 2 plus G times delta Z plus uh, point zero twenty six L over D times U1 squared. And putting in the numbers gives us the following. Result is 327,685 kilograms per meter per second squared. Uh, and the units are the same as a Pascal. Uh, which means that our final result is 327 0.7 kilopascal. Now if you're confused about the units, let me show you why they're, they're the same. So if we look at um, what a pascal is, we'll see that um, it is indeed the same. This pascal is newton per meter squared, and a newton is a kilogram per meter per second squared, or kilogram times meter per second squared. Uh, so everything uh, then becomes kilogram per meter per second square. And the problem is solved.